As we well know, the deep plane is really comprised of just two components. It's the movement or motion of the golf club and the direction that the face is pointing at impact. That creates the deep plane. So what we're going to do first is this red stick is going to represent the motion of the club's center of gravity or I might refer to sometimes as sweet spot. So as that club is moving towards the target, this red line represents that. So that, that motion or that path can be left of the hole, right of the hole, we can hit up on it or hit down on it. So really the motion of the club head uh, also includes angle of attack and horizontal differences. So that forms half the D-plane. The second half is what we call normal to the club face. Normal to the club face is perpendicular in all directions to the club face. So it's the way the direction that the face is pointing at impact. Now, they say that two lines can create a plane. So if we have the direction of the path and the direction of the face, that creates a plane between these two. And that's what we call the D-plane. And there's our D-plane, this way. And the D-plane contains the initial flight of the golf ball, the lift of the ball is in that plane, and gravity will pull it down. And that plane can be vertical to the ground, and that'll produce a ball without spin or side spin. And then it tilted to the right will produce a slice or fade, and tilted to the left will produce a draw or a hook. Now, when we introduce the golf ball itself, the golf ball will only spin along one axis. That spin axis is always perpendicular to where the D-plane is. So if the D-plane is vertical, the, sp the spin axis will be horizontal to the ground. And if that D-plane is tilted, the, the spin axis is tilted correspondingly to where it is perpendicular to the D-plane itself. So again, the ball will start on the D-plane, rise up that D-plane due to spin, and gravity will pull it right back down to the D-plane if it's a vertical D-plane. However, on crooked shots, it will be tilted, the ball will rise on the D-plane, start on the D-plane, rise on the D-plane, and gravity will pull it off the D-plane. So that's how crooked shots are hit in golf, and obviously, sometimes we want to hit them crooked on purpose. But the other thing to kind of consider is what we call spin loft. We hear a lot about spin with launch monitors and so forth. And the thing we have to understand that the spin loft is the difference between the angle of attack and the face direction. And then it's also due to the speed of the club. But any given speed, once we determine the, this difference here, that determines how much spin the golf ball is going to have. So the greater that is, the more spin, the less it is, less spin. If these two were facing in the same direction, the ball would have no spin at all. Now, we talk a lot about angle of attack with launch monitors. Let's take an example here. We hear that, hey, if we hit down on the ball, we'll spin it more. Well, if the angle of attack is, let's say, level, this is a driver instead of an iron, and the spin loft, let's say, is 10 degrees. If we hit down on it 5 degrees, but the club face changes the same corresponding five degrees, we did not change the spin loft, therefore we would not change the spin. So by just changing the angle of attack doesn't necessarily increase the spin. However, if we had the angle of attack change and the face stay the same, we would increase this spin loft, the difference here, and the ball would spin more. So that's the case there. The last thing to keep into account is the lie of the club. So let's say we have a perfectly fitted club with a vertical D-plane and straight ball flight, and we had a club that was misfit. That tilts our D-plane, which would cause the ball to go right, and this would cause it to go left. However, that can be reconciled by just fixing the club face. Now we have a vertical D-plane and straight ball flight with a club that doesn't fit us. It's not the best thing to do or the best case scenario, but it's how people can hit misfit golf clubs sometimes and still come out with a straight shot. Okay, if we're going to use the D-plane model for teaching, we have to kind of use both what we get from the TrackMan numbers and what we get from video. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you here an example. Here's a friend of mine uh, who is uh, hitting a golf shot and you look at it on video and Rob Noel, he's a teaching professional who's hitting the shot. He is looking like he's cutting across the ball. I think any golfer would look at that video and say he's cutting across it and so would any teacher. However, we can't make that assumption. The same swing, the same video is showing with TrackMan numbers his plane's base is 5.3 degrees left, so his plane is actually swinging to the left. 
However, his angle of attack is 7.5 degrees down, so the path that the golf club is taking at impact is actually one-tenth of a degree inside out. And in this case, his club face was very square at impact and the ball went dead straight. So, what we see on video is plane, the swing plane, and not necessarily the path. So the way we really look at swing plane is we have to I use this hula hoop that has a base to it. It's got the circular motion of the club and the base of the hula hoop is like the base of the plane. And we confuse, I think, plane direction with path direction. So for instance, if the plane direction is at the hole, the base of the plane goes at the hole, we don't see any circle here. If the plane is to the right, we see in a circle on video, and if the plane is to the left, we're seeing a circle on video, and if it's right at the hole, we see nothing. So that's the plane of the club. But the question is, what is the, what is the actual motion of the club or the path doing at impact? And the first thing we need to understand is that the path of the golf club is ever-changing on the inclined plane. So here is a, um, here's an angled plane. We have a plane board here uh, that's in yellow. Uh, the target line also is in a little bit darker yellow. And you can see the base of the inclined plane is straight down the target line. So as the club approaches the golf ball or wherever the golf ball is hit, we have the club head here that has this stick sticking out of the face. And that's not necessarily pointing where the face is pointing, but that's pointing the direction of the motion of the club head. So at this very moment, the, the, the club head's 12 degrees inside out. As we're coming down the inside, uh, incline plane, that's eight degrees inside out. And as we get closer and closer to low point, you can see that that path is getting closer and closer to the target line. And that the only time that the path is going down the target line is when the club is at the bottom of its arc. After the club reaches the bottom of its arc and starts on its way up, now the path of the club starts going more and more left of the target line. So, if we're gonna hit a straight golf shot with a zero angle of attack, we can use this model. However, when we hit an iron, we wanna hit down on it and this won't work. So how do we do that? As what Rob did on video, now here's the incline plane and the base of the incline plane you can see is aimed to the left of the target and the target line being straight ahead. On this particular model, as he comes down, his path is still to the right, still to the right, but there's going to be a point in time where this path is zero. And when that path is zero, if he has a square club face, the ball by law in D-plane, he's going to have a vertical D-plane and the ball's going to go straight at the hole. But you can also see at that very moment in time, the shaft's still leaning forward. And in this pendulum model that I have, if the shaft's leaning forward, we know the angle of attack is down. So with the angle of the attack down, the plane base needs to be to the left to create a zero path. Now, if he wants to draw the ball, that would be a little bit different. But that's how he hit that straightaway golf shot with a downward angle of attack. Okay, so we see the scenario when someone looks over the top and if they're hitting down might not be over the top as far as their path is concerned. Now we're going to see the other version. Here Rob is hitting on the downswing and we trace the, the sweet spot of the golf club or the center of gravity and we see that it clearly looks like it's going out to the right. And what we can't see from video is where the angle of attack is and that's where TrackMan comes in so handily. The base of his plane, sure enough, is 4.4 degrees to the right of the target, but his angle of attack on this swing is 3.6 degrees up. So the path of his club at the moment of impact is one degree inside out and not massively inside out as this video might show. And his club face in this particular swing was very square at impact and the ball went very straight. You could see it never left this post the whole time in its flight. So now, if he would have hit that same ball at the bottom of his arc, he would have truly been way inside out. So you have to take the angle of attack and the plane direction and reconcile them for straightaway ball flight or even when you're trying to curve the ball on purpose, or that might even be your base shot. You have to reconcile the differences between the plane, the path, and the club face. And TrackMan's the only thing that's gonna give you those kind of tools. So here's the model where the base of the plane is pointed to the right of the target line. And you can see as he comes down, 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 right here on our model, this shaft 
It's a little bit crooked because of the parallax of the camera, but his shaft is pretty close to straight up and down, somewhere about in here, and you can see that's clearly swinging to the right. But he's not going to hit the ball here. He's going to hit it on the upswing. So here we continue go on the upswing, hitting up, hitting up. There's his straightaway path. And you can see the shaft in this, again, since it's a pendulum model, is leaning backwards. We can also have the situation where the shaft could be leaning forward and still have an upward angle of attack. And he is have a straightaway path right to the hole. If his club face at that very moment is pointing in the direction of the target, he has a vertical D-plane and the ball will go dead straight, even though on video it looks like he's swinging way out to the right.